Long ago, seven Dragon Balls were forged and scattered over the face of the planet. Once united, the Eternal Dragon will be called forth to grant the Discoverer a single wish. Hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Wokey and I'm here with Zenrod. Hello. And a special guest, D Free. Say hello, D Free. Oh man, I was just drinking a monster and I had a burp right exactly when you said that. Perfect! <laughs> <laughs> so for the people who don't know what Shonen Archive is, Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zenrod plan to watch absolutely everything from Shonen Jump anime related. Until either one of us goes down from uh, 8,000 life points to zero, or the universe itself ceases to exist. Whichever one of it happens to, whichever situation <laughs> happens that causes the show to stop, we'll be happy with whatever situation. Oh my goodness. Uh, we are starting with Gintama. We also did, we're also doing Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, but today we decided to take a side tangent and talk about Dragon Ball Super Super Hero. And I brought in uh, D-Free because he's a good friend of ours. He's a good friend of ours specifically because of Dragon Ball. I don't think we would have been friends at all if it was not for Dragon Ball in a really funny roundabout way. <laughs> so it's kind of nice to get it's kind of nice to get together and actually talk about Dragon Ball. So it's going to be a fun old video. For the people who don't know who you are, D-Free, which I assume if they're on my channel, they know who you are. <laughs> but you want to tell them who you are? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, just uh, your friendly neighborhood YouTuber. I do a lot of uh, mobile games, gotcha games, Dragon Ball games, whatever the case is. So, yeah. And you've been doing it for years, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, since, like, 2015. So it's been mm. a really long time. Yeah. An early innovator of also Dokkan back in the day before Dokkan completely changed everything around everyone. <laughs> and it became unsustainable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dokkan, uh, I got on the wave before it blew up. Yeah, and then was... helped it transition to the blow up, and then it just it got crazy. Yeah, you're like an extremely important member of the basketball team. You helped <laughs> it out when it needed it the most, and now look where it is. And now you can freely retire and enjoy playing other things. You know, that's how I felt a few years ago when I like stopped recording. I was like, you know what? I feel like I feel like my job here is done. Type deal. Yeah, you looked <laughs> over, you land, you smiled, and <laughs> you did a thumbs up, and you left. <laughs> Perfectly fine. <laughs> well yeah, I still keep up with it though because you know, it's my it's my my ex, you know, I got to keep a tab on her. <laughs> Make sure she's not doing too crazy out. <laughs> Basically. All right, before we uh, have Zen explain what the movie is and stuff, I may as well do some cuz we are talking about a new series on Shonen Archive. I have to actually give a little bit of history stuff. So get ready to hear some history about Dragon Ball if you're unfamiliar with it. Let's go. Okay, so a quick history of Dragon Ball before we talk about the movie. Uh, just in case there's anyone here who doesn't know anything about Dragon Ball, very somehow. niche series. Dragon Ball, very yeah, niche. Not a lot of, not a definitely lot of, not uh, that popular. popularity. No, no, definitely not one of the biggest, mo uh, the, one of the biggest series out there. Uh, in 1980, Akira Toriyama would create one of the biggest mangas of all time, super important, super loved, Doctor Slump. Uh, a gag manga which featured a robot girl named Rayleigh that would be a massive success for him and Shonen Jump. And then four years later, he ran out of jokes <laughs> and he didn't want to continue the series anymore. Uh, so he said, I want to end it. And Shonen Jump said, the fuck you, you fuck you want to do what now? And they said, no, you can't end the super popular series because you ran out of jokes. We are going to let you end it, but only if you create something that is immediately of replacement. And so you can keep your stuff going. And he said, sure. And he looked uh, to one of his old one-shot mangas called Dragon Boy. And he would rework it. And then he would eventually make Dragon Ball. And that would eventually give us the anime, which is, of course, Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT. I don't think he had any involvement in Dragon Ball GT other than to sign the checks to say, hey, thanks for the money <laughs> and left. Here's Super Saiyan 4. <laughs> Uh, and Dragon Ball Super. Uh, for a more detailed look into those series specifically, wait for in 10 years when me and Zen have to talk about one of them <laughs> at some point, but not right now. <laughs> When's the One Piece discussion coming? Oh, man. If, uh. only, if you want to talk, <laughs> when is the one? We're going to talk about this later off screen. <laughs> <laughs> 
but today we're talking about the 22nd Dragon Ball movie in existence, of course, Dragon Ball Super Superhero. Quickly, can you guys name all the other 22nd Dragon Ball movies? I can name all of the Z+, plus, but I always forget the names of the base Dragon Ball ones. Mm. Well, let me quickly, what about you, Zen? Can you name every single one of them? I think if anyone could, you could. Uh, I don't think I could name all of the Dragon Ball ones, because some of them I'm not 100% on. Like the Chaozu Prince one, I don't remember the name of that one. It's the Gold Adventure, how dare you, it's the best one! <laughs> it is the best one, but I don't remember the name. <laughs> Alright, let me quickly run down them all. Starting from with Dragon Ball, it is, of course, Dragon Ball Curse of the Blood Rupees, Dragon Ball Sleeping Princess in the Devil's Castle. Ah, that's the one I forgot. Mm -hmm. Mystical Adventure, and then we enter the Weird Zone. Where it's like technically not Z, but it's not Dragon Ball. Uh, Dead Zone, the world's and the world's strongest. Technically not Z, but on the cusp of Dragon Ball Z, basically. Uh, and then there's, of course, the Tree of Might, which now we're talking about weird timelines because that takes place after Vegeta has already attacked. And somehow everyone is also alive again. It's really fucky. Um, followed up by Lord Slug, Cooler's Revenge, The Return of Cooler, Super Android 13, Broly the Legendary Super Saiyan, Bojack Unchained, Broly Second Coming, Bio Broly, Fusion Reborn, Wrath of the Dragon, The Path of Power, Battle of Gods, Resurrection F. I always thought it was called Resurrection of F, but no, it's actually just Resurrection F. Uh, Super Broly, superhero and then the one no one ever wants to remember dragon ball evolution which is also a thing me and zen have talked about in the past with my siblings oh my god does path to power actually classify as a movie uh yeah apparently according to this wikipedia and let me tell you no one can edit this to prove me wrong <laughs> but <laughs> path of power is considered the 17th a retelling the retelling of the original Dragon Ball merging elements from Pilaf and the Red Ribbon Saga. That's a weird one, because I've never considered that one when talking about it. It mm. almost would be like almost like the same as considering that uh, GT one. Uh, mm. What is it? Heroes Legacy or something? Oh, one yeah. Kid, funny, Goku Jr. funny enough, this Wikipedia article does not consider the Dragon Ball GT movies to be a part of the, the movie canon at all. Well, so, well, it considers the one that came out in that time period with Path to Power. Because yeah, they just took the animation staff from that movie to redo that. So that's why I'm damn. saying, like, does that actually classify? You know what? That's a very good question. These people are saying no. So I'm going to have to just trust Wikipedia on this. If you have any specific feelings <laughs> about whether or not the GT movie counts, tell me. <laughs> um, and yeah, so yeah, this is the 22nd, as I said before. This movie ended up doing extremely well. It is the second anime movie to ever make number one at the box office, followed by Pokemon, the first movie. <laughs> That's so crazy, man. That is insane. Ins also insane, I watched both of those in theaters. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, me too. Yep. <laughs> that first movie for uh, the Pokemon, the first movie was insane, bro. I remember the theater being packed. Yeah, that the that theater was crazy. Uh, funny enough, this theater that I went for superhero not packed at all. Well, I think I think the reason why with that is because you know, and people yeah. talk about the sales of superhero and stuff, and it's it's selling really really good. But uh, part of that is because it's in so many locations. But people are disregarding the fact that a ton of those locations are going to be near empty. So yeah. yeah, that's probably what happened to you because mine was like three quarters full. Man, really? Yeah. That's crazy. Uh, well, to be fair, specifically to me, I watched it in like in the afternoon, and you know, anime fans uh, aren't going to yeah. be up in the <laughs> the middle of the day. Yeah, yeah, I watched mine at like prime time, like <laughs> seven o'clock. Yeah, anime see, fans in their natural hibernation cycle. Are you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're not going to be out and about until way later into the night. So I think a vast majority of them would go to the nighttime, um, to nighttime screenings of it. It would just make the most sense. Yeah, Mine was also in IMAX and in uh, uh, subs, so I assume that it's a super niche of people who want to hear their eardrums completely destroyed by the IMAX sound system <laughs> of people <laughs> yelling into your ear. So maybe some of them would refuse. Of course, and then there's others who just want to actually legitimately see the dub. Because when I went to go see Resurrection F in theaters, there was a lot of people, but it was also the dub. And so a lot uh, of people were out there for the dub, I think. I happened to see the dub because I went with a couple of friends. Mm -hmm. so maybe that's part of it too yeah I really do think that in terms of 
if people are going to the theaters, they're going to go see the dub version. And the people who are super into it are going to see the sub version. And then there's people like me who didn't care and just wanted to see it at a reasonable time before I had to record with Zen later on in the day. And so that made the perfect sense to kind of go in there and see it. Uh, but yeah, funny enough, the only the other movie that came really close was Demon Slayer, but it just barely lost by like one million to Mortal Kombat. So some people would consider that a win because I that was an extremely close battle. I remember because I was I think I told my sister like we should really go see Demon Slayer because <laughs> I want to be I really wanted to see it become number one just because the idea of a, a bunch of like people who are not into anime talking about anime on the news like news people having to go out there and saying. Demon Slayer, the number one movie in America right now, <laughs> which happened with Dragon Ball. My mom talked to me about superheroes. She's like, oh my god, Dragon Ball. And I was like, why the hell is my mom saying Dragon Ball? She's like, that's the movie you went to go see, right? And I'm like, yes, it was. And then end the conversation right there. You know, but it was a, a weird moment in time for sure. And all it took was a, a pandemic and extremely weak uh, week for movie <laughs> in general. <laughs> Shoutouts to Beast and Idris Elba trying his damnedest to beat Goku. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy that an anime movie is number one. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, I think that probably would mean, hopefully, some. I think some other ones did pretty good. Like Jujutsu Kaisen, when it came over, it did pretty f- well. It did like 10 million, which yeah. is more than I would ever expect from specifically Jujutsu Kaisen over here for a prequel movie. I would not have expected it to pull in that much, and that's pretty damn impressive in, in my book. I went to go see it on opening day. Um, there was a few. It wasn't as same amount of time. Same time. It wasn't uh, as packed as the Dragon Ball, though. Mm-hmm. I didn't see the Demon Slayer movie, though, but that one also did 9 to 10 million. So they all did about the same, really. Yeah. It's a good time for being an anime movie, I guess, and releasing right now. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there you go. There's a small little bit of history for Dragon Ball. And now, Zen, tell us what happens in this movie. Ah, oh, Jesus, me. <laughs> uh, it has to be okay. you. So, there's Pan training with Piccolo, and the best scene of the movie happens when Pan or when Piccolo decks the absolute shit out <laughs> of his three-year-old little girl and punches her through a rock. Um, it I sounds like it. I'm joking when I say it's the best scene of the movie. I'm not. It's, um, it's really good. <laughs> it is really good. It's really funny. Um, and then they talk for a bit, and she goes off to kindergarten, and Piccolo gets jumped by uh, a very flamboyant robot with like a shark head. Um, yeah, as you do. As one does, on top of a cliff face, as one does. That's just where he likes to hang out before he gets his shit destroyed. Um, he gets blasted by this dude, and he's like, I gotta follow this guy, uh, to fucking learn what's going on, and he disguises himself as a Red Ribbon soldier and sneaks into the Red Ribbon army, because it turns out they liberated, or they didn't liberate him, but he just got out of jail on his own, just like, as a nice boy, I guess. Yeah, um, they let, they just kind of leave him out of the prison. They just let him, <laughs> let him, let his sentence expire. And then he immediately throws a grenade, like, ah, oh, whatever, I hear you guys talking shit as I'm leaving. <laughs> Fuck yeah, no. he blows he off throws... the jail. It's and he was good. in jail, which was another pretty good joke, uh, for digging up bodies and making them androids that work <laughs> at a convenience store to get him some money. A real telling tale <laughs> on capitalism. Yeah, <laughs> really. And they just said, I remember they were like, why didn't he just rob the place? <laughs> <laughs> Instead of stealing the bodies. Like, what the heck? <laughs> can't do that's anti-hero business but meanwhile turning someone into a zombie and giving them life again to work in capitalism fully okay yeah to be a 7-eleven clerk <laughs> that's something else <laughs> um and then piccolo like figures out the plan and he's like ah oh, quick they're gonna revive fucking cell because of course they are <laughs> um and he's like bulma you gotta contact Whis. and she's like all right but i lost my Whis." uh communicator thing so this is a really long shot of my butt while i look for that yeah she it's finds a... it and we cut to goku and vegeta training with also broly on uh weiss and Bro- on beerus's planet and uh goku's like you gotta calm down because you almost went crazy and last time you did that you really beat the shit out of me so i'd <laughs> rather you not do that again uh and he's like ah oh, sorry and they just kind of hang out and then beerus comes out and he gets this really weird erection where uh, over chili which made me really uncomfortable because he is a cat man. <laughs> um, 
we don't really question. Well, to be fair, Broly's a monkey man, and most people like Chile with uh, Broly, Broly is a man with a monkey tail. He turns Beerus into a monkey. Is a cat man. He can turn into a giant monkey on the full he moon. Could. Are you telling? He could. Beerus is always a cat. Didn't also Vegeta's brother marry like a weather balloon? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Do you feel yes. more as creeped out about that as well? Uh, that was less leery. Beerus does a lot of leering at her, which is was in this movie, which was very weird. Okay, I'll. You know what? To be fair, I did find it a little bit weird when Beerus started to go on the prowl. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's say started to go after Chilai a little hard there. Um, yeah. Piccolo is like, okay, obviously you can't get in touch with Whis because Beerus throws an empty tub of ice cream or something on top of his staff, yeah. and so it blocks the call. I guess they can't see it anymore. They can't see it going off. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure and it makes I'm, a noise and, while it's going off. Like yeah, but then you also, in the movie. Yeah, but then you also have Goku and Vegeta going ah, bam, ah screaming that's at each true. other. That's true. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of in that, in that scene. So that's yeah, fine. Try, try having uh, a phone call with Vegeta and Goku going at it in the background. Um. So they're not, they're not there, and Piccolo's like, shit, I gotta do this on my own, because Gohan's too much of a little bitch to help me now, because he's too weak. Because he puts his weighted clothes on Gohan, and Gohan's like, ah, that's heavy. And Piccolo's like, yeah, you little bitch. And and he, also he, can't, he also can't sense him when he goes up there. A little. Oh, that's that's coming up. That's actually. later. That's later, yeah. My bad. Um, Jump in the gun. So he gets the Dragon Balls, and Bulma, well, Bulma already has them, because of course she does. And he's like, um, hey, can I have some of them, them their wishes? And he wishes to get his potential unlocked, like the great elder Namek did to Gohan and Krillin on Namek, which I guess is the same thing as the one that Gohan got from the Elder Kai, because he says that they're the same later on. I don't know. Um, it He's going to have to go with it at that point. It just doesn't really matter, yeah. And then Shenron's like, by the way, I also threw a transformation <laughs> in there, but I'm not going to tell you about it. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. What's next? I gave you a little um, extra power. Like, give me a little, hey! give you a little treat. Little I treat, really, buddy, just, just for you. It is really uh, funny the the relationship between Shenron and Piccolo at this moment. It's like I had no idea they were this close because Shenron's like, "Hey, Piccolo, what's good? <laughs> How's it going? You want your potential unleashed? Oh yeah, you got it. You know what? Well, I threw in a little extra. That's his guy, though. You know, Kami created him, so they it's go true. way back. That's yeah, true. At that point, it's like, hey, I'm just trying to help a brother out, man. You got you're lacking he, in a lot of departments here. <laughs> You know, he is Kami. And the funny thing is they actually reference Kami and Piccolo Jr. Or uh, not Piccolo Jr., but King Piccolo like several times in this movie. A lot of times, yeah. Like, yeah. it was weird. <laughs> yeah, because they usually never bring it up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So. Yeah. So, yeah, he yeah. gets the wishes. Uh, he So he goes back after he gets his wishes and Bulma gets um, a nicer butt and slightly longer eyelashes with the other two wishes. Um. <laughs> Piccolo you didn't think it was back. weird when they close zoomed in on her butt while she was digging for the thing? They I guess did. that's why. That must be why. Yeah. It was foretelling. Look, look at this wish in action. Um, <laughs> <laughs> putting it to good use, Bulma. Yeah. So he goes back and they're like, I know we gotta get rid of this Gohan guy. He's a real he's a real menace. Uh because they tricked the doctor guy into thinking that Bulma has some sort of evil cabal of, of monster warriors from another planet. They hit him with uh, the Alex Jones conspiracy Earth. theories. Yeah, they, they they went full of the, like the water's turning the Saiyans gay. <laughs> uh, and he <laughs> went for it. And so he, he made it. those those robot shark head boys uh, to fight them. And so they're like, our next strat has got to be to take out this Gohan guy because he's he's he killed Cell last time. Uh, so they conspire to kidnap Pan in order to use her to threaten Gohan. Uh, wait, Piccolo wait, decides. Then you missed to... the best thing. You forgot. To, sorry, you forgot to mention wait. them being terrified of Satan's potential. I thought they said actually he's not that serious because they because wasn't the no, doctor. No, they like, said they were like, like, we, they were like no. we don't actually know what he can really do. They said we don't really know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the funny enough, they bring it up a little bit later where they're like, "Should we bring in uh, Satan?" And they're like, "We still don't know if we're ready for Satan yet." <laughs> <laughs> they're right, almost that's funny. yeah, which in an alternate universe that means that they awaken Cell Max and Cell Max at the fight Hercule. 
<laughs> just an oh, immediate yeah. obliter- obliteration on that part. It's a real shame that Hercule wasn't actually in this, because imagine the propaganda films he would have been able to make if he was there when Cell Max got taken down. Oh, God. Never ending. Continue on, Zen. Uh, Piccolo says, okay, I want to go on the kidnap the small child team, uh, along with this big muscular dude who gets his shit wrecked by Pan. And then Pan is able to sense that Piccolo is the other guy in the outfit. Um, and he's like, great, we're going to, I have a plan. I'm going to help them kidnap you to make your dad mad so he can be a fighter again. <laughs> uh, okay. So they they do it Such and Pan plays plan. along. Um, Gohan eventually does show up when they go to threaten him with the picture of a, a captured Pan. Um they he starts fighting Gamma number one, and he's like not doing so good. Yeah. Uh, and they have like five different times in this movie where Pickle is like, "All right, we gotta piss him off, <laughs> quick. <laughs> we gotta Let's piss him off again." Uh, so he like fakes hurting Pan, and that makes Gohan real mad. And he starts doing better, and he goes ultimate, uh, and he starts winning. And then Gamma two is like, "I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in," and then Piccolo stops him, and and they fight too. And then uh, he's like, ah, he's too strong for me, even with my special power-up that I got from the dragon, but not my extra special power-up that I got from the dragon, where he turns into the Orange Hulk. Um, Yeah. He (laughs) beats the shit out of him in one hit, and then they're like, ah, we're friends now. Um, It's an insane, like, one-shot, like, he shows up, and is like hulking big, and he's like, ah, whatever, I can do it, and then he immediately gets jobbed out. (laughs) Just, just one hit, yeah, just one crushed. Hit. Um, they become buddies because Piccolo's like, don't you think it's a little bit weird that the side that keeps saying that the heroes is kidnapping children, and that guy's like, ah, fuck, are we the baddies? And Piccolo's <laughs> like, yes. Uh, mm-hmm. And so they, they team up, um, and then the leader of the Red Ribbon Army, whose name I don't remember. Magenta. Um, Magenta. Runs off, and he's like, I'm gonna make Cell Max come out because I'm sick of this shit. And uh, he starts activating Cell Max, and he gets confronted by uh, Dr. Hato, who uh, poisons him to death with a little bee robot. <laughs> which he threatened to do at the beginning of the yes, movie. Yes, which is actually, yeah, he did say that uh, if you have any skin on you, I can poison you to death with my bee robot, uh, which he did. So th- it's like the classic uh, filmmaking technique. If you unveil a poison bee robot in the first act, you have <laughs> you... to use it by the third act. Yes, Chekhov's uh, poison bee. Chekhov's poison bee, yeah. Um, but he does end up activating Cell Max before he perishes from the Poison Bee, um, and then there's just a big-ass fight scene where Gohan, Piccolo, Goten, Trunks, and Android 18, who show up in this movie literally only for this exact moment, and then don't do anything, um, blast Cell Max a bunch of times, and then Gamma 2 blows himself up to try to stop him, because apparently hitting him on, right on the top of his head is like his built-in weakness. Yeah, Dr. Hedo designed it that way. Yeah, Dr. Hedo designed him so that if you bop him on the top of the head, it just erases all of his cells, which is really funny to say. Yeah. Um, And they keep trying it, and Pickle's like, all right, I'm in in, uh, orange mode now. And then Krillin's like, hey, why don't you get big? And Pickle's like, what the fuck are you talking about? (laughs) And Krillin's like, you can go big that like that time. And Pickle's like, oh, fuck, I forgot my own biology. I can totally do that. (laughs) And he just gets big. And he fights Cell a bit, um, and he's getting his shit tossed. And Gohan's like, I'm mad again, so I can go ultimate again. I got re-mad enough to do this again. Um, they he also got fight the Senzu there. Yeah, yeah he, he got the, the Senzu because he dropped his yeah. in what I hope is a callback to when he dropped the Patara earring. Yeah, um, yeah, it has to be. Also, apparently, his eyesight gets better when he transforms, which is also really funny. I think, um, I think what the I choose implication to believe is, is a callback to Spider-Man 1. Oh my god. <laughs> I think the implication is that he had, he just naturally has bad eyesight, and he probably gets it from his human side. So maybe but utilizing when he more. He takes of the, glasses off. Like yeah, off that's what I was going to say. Like transforming, maybe utilizes more of his Saiyan biology. Is my I, headcanon I on that? I to believe it's like Spider Man One, where when he gets his powers, his, his eyesight just gets better. Yeah. Now that you mention it, on Chi Chi's side of the family, the Ox King does wear glasses. Yeah, so that's why I'm saying like he's the only one that has glasses, and he actually needs them as referenced in the movie. So, huh. 
that might be something. The way say saying biology works is truly a wonder. <laughs> I mean, I don't think they even thought about this. That we they should no. cut us next. <laughs> no, Kotir Joriyama just woke up one day and said, I finally figured out, 20 years later, I figured out a way to explain his glasses. I was going to say, I'm happy that they even reference it at all, because he always wore glasses, and it's like, dude, why the hell are you wearing glasses? Like, is it like a fashion statement, or are they like reading <laughs> only glasses, you know? Like, okay, I guess he needs them. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, no, fair enough. I, it net, I never actually dawned on me that. It's like, I actually thought it was like you said, it was a fashion choice. He's like, I don't know, maybe it, maybe he feels self-conscious because of the same thing. He's getting his Clark he, Kent on. Yeah, that too. Maybe a little bit of that. But, yeah. Continue on, Zen. Uh, they they do some, some fighting. Uh, they do some more fighting. Um... Eventually, giant Piccolo grabs him with his stretchy arms, and he's like, "You gotta blast him good." Um, and then Gohan ain't strong enough in his ultimate form to blast him good enough. Uh, so he gets real mad, mad -er -er -er, uh when Piccolo seems to die. Uh, and then he turns into Super Saiyan two Teen Gohan, but with white hair this time. Um, and then he charges up a special beam cannon, and he shoots like forehead headshots the shit out of Cell. No with Piccolo, who is back, not dead, in fact. Um, and then uh, the battle ends, and Hedo and Gamma 1 are like, damn, we should turn ourselves into the cops. And then Krillin, who is a cop, is like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Please don't. You shouldn't do that. Uh, and then Piccolo's like, yeah, what if we just uh, pretend that this movie didn't take place? And they're like, <laughs> bet. And then it ends. And then Voma ends up hiring th them to make skincare so she can stop using the Dragon Balls on. Because Dr. Hedo specifically keeps, keeps mentioning that he's altered his skin so that it's immune to bullets. So when he gets shot, like, again, in the beginning of the movie, he explains it totally like, hey, I can survive a gunshot, so I'm not afraid of a gun. So then when he gets shot, like, three times and he falls down, <laughs> which I assume is actually because even though he got shot, he got taken down because he's a little fat boy, so... <laughs> He got hit. The blood force trauma was enough to at least <laughs> kneel him down a little bit. But then he gets up and says, like, I'm not I'm immune to bullets. And then Bulma says, can you make your weird skin thing make people look younger? He's like, I think that's possible. And she's like, you got a fucking job at Capsule Corp. <laughs> um, I don't know if it was on Zen's copy. So just to be clear on everything for uh, cut. Uh, Transparency's sake, I had to find a cam for Zen <laughs> in order for him to watch, watch the movie. Watch that straight on Luffy's boat, baby. Yeah. Um, at the end, there's a little bit of end credit bits, which are some really good end credit bits. Like, there's, I don't know if it was on your version of it, but, like, they show the aftermath of, like, people going home. One of them is, like, Videl going home, and she's, like, super, like, distraught. And then you see what she sees, and she sees the giant hole Gohan left at their house. <laughs> I uh, know that was not in my, my uh, copy. That's a shame. It was re some really good, like just closing up bits to say, like, oh, here's where some of the characters are now. But I thought it was pretty funny that because Go Gohan just makes a huge asshole where his house is. He doesn't <laughs> think of Eddie twice once he sees that Pan's in danger. But then uh, I thought this when I was watching the movie because the house tips over. I'm like, dude, that's your house. Someone's gonna have to <laughs> clean up your house after this. <laughs> so. That's I thought that was one of the more cool moments from Gohan. When he gets uh, all angry. Yeah, because he yeah, right immediately... Outside his house. He snapped yeah. out really quick and was like, where the hell is my daughter? Like, da -da -da -da. Yeah, it <laughs> did. it's funny because they bring it up multiple times at the beginning of the movie, which I assume is usually there for the people who literally did not see Dragon Ball and know that Gohan gets super angry. Uh, but mm -hmm. when they say it, he's like, oh, yeah, when he gets super angry, then this happens. And then when the guy is immediately like, hey, hey, whatever, loser dude, we have your girl. And he shows this, like, not the best acting in the world of Pan pretending to be, like, in, in peril and stuff. And then he immediately snaps and he's like, where the hell is my daughter? Like, he loses all sense of, like, oh, yeah, I'm way stronger than this guy. So I should hold back. He just goes like, Woo, show me where my daughter is now. And he just screams, and it's it's pretty good. And then the guy's like, oh, my God, sir, yes, please. I'll take you there right now. <laughs> Let's go. Immediately backs down from his, uh, from his big thing. So before we get into some more specific things in the movie, we should mention how much we ended up liking it. Zen, I think it's pretty clear from your description of the movie 
How did you feel from it? How did you feel about it? I don't want to be hyperbolic here. Uh, mm. So I want to be as, as, you know, fair as possible. Uh, the shit that I took before I got on this call was more enjoyable overall. <laughs> Like, oh in per the amount of time that I spent doing it and the satisfaction afterward, for sure. Just not, not, didn't do anything for you, actively did things against you. There were, there were three or four scenes where I was like, I really like that. Like, when Gohan did the Makin Kosopo and Piccolo and him talked about it later, and Piccolo, like, gave him that nice, like, genuine compliment after he had been kind of shitting on him all movie. Yes, I was like, yeah. that's really nice. I really enjoyed that little bit of, like, they still have a really sweet relationship that's based on, like, actually caring about each other it was nice to see that um all the pan stuff was fun i like when she ran like a rally i was like ah i've seen this yes that's a reference i understand <laughs> i almost went to my brother who was right next to me as we were watching and said it's the run <laughs> it's the thing she's doing the thing she's doing it um, i enjoyed that um there's probably another thing somewhere just some for more some more pan stuff. I'll just mention it here while you're remembering it. I also really like when she pretends to be because she's clearly stronger than every single soldier in the Red Ribbon Army minus Gamma One and Two. Um, so when she has to pretend to be kidnapped, like she immediately knocks Number Fifteen out, and then Piccolo has to convince her, like, I need you to pretend to be uh, put on these handcuffs and kind of pretend to be a prisoner. But then when she's actually in there, she's still acting like a kid and not fully taking it 100% serious, except for when she's kind of told to, like, hey, act it up a little bit so that your father will be very distraught for you. Um, which, out, which, out of context of specifically Dragon Ball, kind of seems like a dick thing to kind of do <laughs> to just get uh, a guy it's a strong. It's a dick thing to do even in the context of Dragon Ball, because later on we find out that Piccolo didn't know he could go orange, and he was not stronger than those guys and without that. <laughs> He had so no idea, so yes. <laughs> he, he brought the child and Gohan into a situation where they were not able to win, and he was not strong enough to help them if they did not win. Kind of really a dick. Funny. It is. <laughs> uh, and then I also like when they're like, when he's like, saying, oh, okay, he needs to get more angry. I'm going to pretend to like um, shoot you or something. And it's they're like, like holding her up by her handcuffs or something, but she's just floating. There. I don't know. I don't know exactly yeah, know what he's but, supposed to be doing. But the, he's using his hand as like a platform to give her a place to like stay safely sit. So even it's very clear that she is in on this, but no one can see from far away. Um, but I actually liked it right before that happened when he pointed the gun at her. One of the gamma's like, "What are you doing? Stop! That's the." That's a terrible thing to do. We're not villains. And then right before you could say villains, that's when Gohan's like, you bastard, you're putting a gun on a child. <laughs> Even though he should know his child would probably be able to dodge a bullet at this point. But a lot of the pan stuff I thought was fun to see. Um, which is fun. I never thought I would ever say something about pan like that. Uh, especially after watching Dragon Ball GT. I did not expect <laughs> to ever be on anything. Enjoy pan. Yeah, we're kind of using Pan correctly, because there are parts in Dragon Ball GT that I liked Pan, but I felt like the people on GT wanted a Bulma without Bulma's body. So it felt similar to like how you felt weirded out when with Beerus and Chilai. I felt like almost every single scene with Pan and GT is like, oh, please don't just yeah, make Yeah, please a don't do that. Please don't do that. And this please. Is like, yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, it's it's kind of that feeling for me specifically. So for a movie to actually kind of build up on it, and I think some of this actually started in Super previously with Baby Pan, right? So it's kind of just building up on what they had already been doing. But funny enough, I haven't seen fully all of Dragon Ball Super, just the end of it, <laughs> just the UI Goku stuff and the beginning parts of it. I have a truly weird uh, timeline of seeing stuff. But can you remember anything else that you enjoyed from it, Zen? Did you say something, or was it just a grunt? It was just a grunt. It was a thinking grunt. Um, no, not really. No. Oh, no, I, I did think of one. I like the weird anime, like, happy pose scene that Piccolo does after she says he can have one of the wishes, where he throws his red ribbon helmet in the air and then flies up and, like, grabs it <laughs> in an anime excited pose and then puts it on and flies down. I thought that was funny. Yeah, that's pretty good. 
Um, I also ended up liking Piccolo dressed up as a red, 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 red army guy too, because at some point it's really the worst disguise because his skin is green, and it only really gets called out once when the guy's like, because he's he, his excuse is like I've been using the bathroom a whole bunch, and when he comes back he's like, man, you must have been uh, in dire straits because you're looking a little green. <laughs> So they assume just the horrible stomach pains is causing him to look green. But other than that, oh, you also like the poison bee. <laughs> the poison bee sting. Yeah, it's hard to dislike the poison bee. Chekhov's poison bee. Uh, yeah. There was also Chekhov's Gotenks, which is if you include Trunks and Goten in anything, you must make them into fat Gotenks because they're not allowed to serve a purpose otherwise. So they That's do true. become fat Gotenks, and they get a nice little uh, scene where they get the shit kicked out of them by all the heroes like a volleyball. And then yeah. they get spiked into Cell's head. And funny then Piccolo enough. even makes a comment that, holy shit, a failed fusion actually did something. <laughs> I thought it was funny how they tried to go Super Saiyan and couldn't. Yeah, apparently they just, the, when a failed fusion tries to do anything, they just can't do anything. I was actually a little disappointed that we didn't see them go Super Saiyan in their regular forms. Because I wanted to see, one, what Goten's hair would look like. And two, I wanted to see Super Saiyan Trunks' hair in the uh, 3D. Yeah, that would have been. It. They stayed in base oh, form. yeah. yeah. That would have been nice. Yeah, that would have been interesting. You're right. I also like how the Red Ribbon Commander was like, yo, check this shit out on his like iPhone. And it's just a fucking MP4 of Trunks <laughs> killing Frieza. <laughs> yeah, that like, was, where did you oh, even I, get that? I laughed so fucking hard at that, too. <laughs> I remember because I was like, he just fucking blasts him. And when after I say that, he's like, I guess aliens are real. And the Capsule Corp is working with some of them. Yeah, they're like, is, I guess Bulma's also an alien. He's like, she's got to be. How do you else do you think they're getting all this tech and this and that? Pretty crazy. Yeah. But also, in general, the conspiracy theory is around Dragon Ball. Like, like, yes, if you're actually a normal citizen in the Dragon Ball world, how do you explain your constant dying and coming back? Like, oh, I'm pretty sure I was dead a day ago, and now I'm back. And now it seems like the sky randomly turns dark and every time Shenron is summoned, and over the years it's beginning way worse. So now people are just assuming, like, I guess on just certain days, the everything goes black every year or so. <laughs> we can't really, d d we don't really know when it happens, but it does happen. Like, the constant state of it. The only thing that really protects them is this, uh, the lie that uh, Satan is actually there. It's going to be able to stop anything from destroying the Earth. It's all the only solace that they really have. I also ended up liking that guy's uh, YouTube channel as well. Because he has like a version of God Tube, but it's literally just him. Uh, what is the name of the guy with the giant afro? Not the giant afro, the the, the pompadour. Because every video of his starts with like, directed by me and consulted by me. Like he has credits in his videos to say like specifically... Oh, I did this, I did this, I did that, and I thought it was really funny. He has, like, a logo, and then when you look at his videos, his videos have, like, 13 views. <laughs> like, all of them combined. <laughs> Some of them more than others. So I thought it was a funny detail for that one. Like, a weird off-site gag for that. Um, but yeah, other than that, then you didn't really find too much enjoyable from this. No, um... I don't know. I, I think I've, like I said, I've just kind of, I feel like I've left the target audience for Dragon Ball a little bit. Um, I mean, like, I, I don't expect a ton out of Dragon Ball, but I think the problem for me is, like, even the payoff, like, because I, I, like, you watch Dragon Ball because it's, the fights are cool, and it's cool to watch dudes beat the shit out of other dudes, right? Like, that, mm -hmm. I get it. Yeah. But, like, even the payoff is kind of the same every time. Like, Gohan got mad again for, like, the ninth time. In just this movie, not counting all the other times. Uh, and he got a new form with different colored hair. And then they did the thing where Cell punches him and he doesn't move. And I know that was supposed to be like the oh fuck moment. And I just kind of groaned. I was like, God, dude, I'm so they, sick of seeing that scene. I'm so they, sick of the also, scene of I got a new form and now you punched me and I did not react to your blow. And they now also I'm going to like. did that with Piccolo too. Yeah, it's, it's the same. It, the payoff is always the same. Like, because in older Dragon Ball stuff, I'm about to go super boomer on everybody right now. Go ahead. But like, super my favorite boomer. example of that, of the your attack didn't hurt me, is Goku against Frieza on Namek, where Frieza shoots him in the face, and he 
takes the hit and he reels back and then he like slowly reveals that he took no damage. Hmm. I love shit like that. I love when people get kicked through like 14 walls and then they just stand up in Dragon Ball and they're like, okay, what was that? Like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> was that but, supposed like, to The only me? time the you have punched me and it didn't make me move was hype for me was Gogeta. The way they did that was cool because he like blasts out Janemba's stomach as he's doing it and like the hit connects as, like as he starts fucking fading up. That shit was cool. But like, I, I don't know. I just, I can't get excited for it anymore. I can't get excited for this is my new thing that's very similar to an old thing, but colored differently. And the payout's going to be exactly the same. You're here to watch me beat the shit out of this guy. He's going to beat me up first, and then I'm going to get my new thing. And then he's going to try to beat me up, but then I'm going to beat him up. And I, it's just not, it's not for me, I don't think, anymore. I feel like you need it to be just a little bit more different in certain ways it's similar well, I think to part how... of the problem is that every character in dragon ball fundamentally has the same abilities like barring piccolo getting big and stretchy arms which he just remembered apparently he could do yeah. um in this film because krillin remembered more about piccolo than piccolo did um <laughs> he was terrified of piccolo that's why he yeah, remembered to be fair he has a lot of trauma from that <laughs> moment i'm sure well, what's the bison line? For me, it was Tuesday. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't yeah. remember shit. The day, Pickle, uh, the day Krillin saw Piccolo go big, it was one of the most terrifying days of his <laughs> life for Piccolo. It was a Tuesday. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Sorry, d Free. Oh, God, he's gone. Oh, did we lose him? No, no. It's a, oh, wait. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, okay, never we're good. Keep going. Anyway, uh, well, perfect. That gives me more time to continue my my yeah. unhinged ranting. Yeah, go um, ahead. I'm here for you, Zen. Yeah. No, it was just like, it just felt n- banking entirely on nostalgia, but not in like a clever callback way. You know what I mean? Like, not in a way I, again, that you would enjoy. Right. Like with Dragon Ball, the target audience is people who liked Dragon Ball in 1998. Right. Yes. Like and I get it's, that it's been that way well. for a very long time. Yeah. Yes. But I'm just kind of at the point now where it's become it it feels very unearned. Like like even the names of the forms, like they don't it's orange piccolo now. <laughs> it's piccolo yeah. and he's orange, so he's orange it's black Frieza. It was a good like, joke when Frieza did it. It was a good joke Once. when Frieza did it the first time Frieza did it. Frieza's done it twice now. And yeah. now Piccolo has done it. And now Gohan's new form is called literally Beast Gohan. Which no one says in the movie. <laughs> no one says it in the movie. And it's also maybe the worst form name in the history of the series, including the color name form names. Beast Gohan is the the exact name that I would expect someone who like really all too much in 1998 to think is a cool name right now. Like, I, like on the so tier dumb. of Blanco? I, I, hey, Gohan Blanco would have at least been funny. Um, <laughs> I mean, they yeah, kind of get like, going, go, it, go. Do we have to bank so hard on nostalgia that, that the final fight of this movie in 2022 is literally Cell versus a taller Super Saiyan 2 Gohan with bigger hair? Like, did he have to look exactly like he did? <laughs> Back when he fought Cell the it first is, time, it is literally just that same style, that giant poof. Because if you don't remember, people, that, if it's been a very long time since people have seen Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, that hair is also big in that specific form. I remember always thinking whenever I said, "Like, damn, that hair is really big." Uh, they've just increased the hair size for Beast yes, Gohan. It, it's just it's the exact same hairstyle, but tilted back a little bit and bigger and white, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um. And it's like, I don't know. And like with Dragon Ball, you can't have but so much of like an emotional core in it. Because like Gamma 2 died and I felt nothing. And even the characters didn't seem to care that much. Like The Gammas cared at the at the end there when they the, when he's little, protecting them. A little. They spent, yeah. And Piccolo was kind of like, he's dead, right? And he goes like, yeah, he is. And they kind of just move on from there. But Yeah, Piccolo was like, hey, remember him. He was a, he was a real superhero. And they're like, that's the title of the movie. Yeah, um, and Piccolo also didn't let Cell crush him either. Yeah, he didn't let yeah, him crush him at that point. That, but that was oh, oh oh I forgot something I found really funny. The bottom of Cell's feet look like shoe bottoms. <laughs> 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 they have like soles of shoes on the bottom of his feet. 
<laughs> oh shit! Now I'm gonna have to look back at that to see. I didn't even notice that when no, I got no, the... I saw the lines. Yeah. Yeah, the bottom of Cell Max's feet look like he's wearing sneakers. Holy shit! <laughs> the That's Cell Max crazy. sneakers. Oh, the Cell Max ones. <laughs> <laughs> Being sold right now to promote the film. No one will be able to get them because sneakerheads will buy them <laughs> immediately, even if they are ugly shoes. Uh, but yeah, yeah can... just uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I feel like I kind of said I don't want to rag, rag too hard on like the whole in my day it was better kind of shit because like it wasn't mm. that much better. But like I don't know, it feels I... weird coming off a movie where we <laughs> Frieza enters his final form and fights Super Saiyan Goku with just two different colors. And then we have Goku against Broly again. And then now we're recreating Cell and Gohan, and Gohan looks identical. Like, it, oh. callbacks and just doing the same thing are, like, two well, different yeah. things. This movie, though, like, you, you mentioned one of them earlier. This movie has, like, a lot of, like, callbacks, but not just, like, that. It's got it's got the callbacks to different scenes, like, uh, what, what was it, the Patara one, where Gohan fumbles the Senzu bean. That's what a callback. They've got the Piccolo. They've got all the Red Ribbon stuff, yeah, but they've got the Special Beam Cannon parallel to Piccolo's version as well, where the enemy's being grappled as well. It's the same type of situation, same type of callback, you know, where Goku, you know, held uh, Raditz as well. Um, there's also the lore stuff, like the Gohan glasses thing. The the explainer that we had uh, for the, the Saiyan growth, the way that that works, and... You know, there's just a lot of different things like that. There's there's even further callbacks, too, in different parts of the movie. So, yeah. you know, the, like the Arale run, it's, just, it's yeah. all over the place with this movie. There's also specific some stuff, too, because I remember thinking, like, if Magenta is somehow related, because they show the fa- like the family tree at one point to mm. explain, like, the, where the Jero line goes. And I think they say specifically Jero had two wives. And looking the way Jero does, I really want to know what kind of game he was pulling. In order I didn't to hear have... two wives, but I heard two sons. He ah, has two, two sons. sons. Yeah, two he. Sons. They had. I think it's just it's just Vomi or twenty one, but mm. it's just her, and they have two kids, and they're one of the kids is the one that sixteen is modeled after, and the other one is not shown, but they do I think say his name. Yeah, and then and that's um, the father of Hito. Hito, yes. Uh, and then they also have a specific, like, a very small... Because I remember thinking, like, if Magenta is the son of the guy from the Red Ribbon Army, then who's specifically, like, how is he related? But actually on his desk, he has a picture of his dad and of his mom, which is another lady from the Red Ribbon Army, which I'm pretty sure is the one that was... Violet. Old. Yeah, Violet. So I, I thought like, it was Ronfan, but yeah, it's Violet. Yeah, it's Violet, which I think both of their colors combined make Magenta, don't they? Yeah. Which is a silly joke. Which is a very dumb Toriyama style joke of how do is why is this character named Magenta because his parents one was red and the other one was violet. Yeah. <laughs> so that's like a, that's it's really all over the place with the lore and callbacks. Yeah, and also yeah, think- I, I feel like there's there's examples of good callbacks like the Gohan dropping the bean. I thought was great because it's like ah that's just like what he did before. That's funny. But it's sometimes it's just like it's too much. It's it's nope. too much. My favorite one was the one I like I said, the special beam cannon one. That one because yes, it goes back really all good. the way. Mm-hmm. That one I thought was really good. Yeah, I like I ended up um, It made me wish they didn't do it in the tournament of power. Because <laughs> 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 this one's a lot better than that one is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh so there you go. Those are the Zen specific thoughts. Let's get into ours, which me and D Free both really like this movie. Right, D Free? You like this movie too. Yeah, yeah. I the thing about this movie is uh there's two reasons why I like it. <clears throat> First and foremost, uh Zen, I mean, I don't know if you mentioned in the last couple of minutes, but uh, absent from your uh you know, soliloquy on the movie was all the stuff that's happening off world. Well, some of it, you know, it got briefly talked about. But one of the best characters in, in the movie, one of my favorite characters in the movie is Broly. I love Broly. I love the way that Goku talks to him like he's his kid. <laughs> he's like, yeah, you can't get angry, this and that. He's trying to teach him about that. And then Vegeta's like, wait, train with Broly? Are you crazy? Like, things like that I thought are hilarious. Um, and then the way that Broly watches them and he, he's crying at the end with Lemo. I love that as well. Um, so, but So that, that scene... If, if anyone knows me specifically and my thoughts about Dragon Ball, I've never seen Dragon Ball Super Broly because I specifically hate the character Broly with a burning uh. passion to the point that I didn't even 
Dragon Ball, one of the series I absolutely love, I refuse to support them and bringing back Broly in a modern wow. sense. You should have watched that one because Broly is really cool now. So at that specific scene when he's crying after seeing the Vegeta and Goku fight when everyone else was like, oh, man, that was it's so boring. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, whatever. Goku and Vegeta fucking fighting. Who gives a shit? I'm Beerus. I fell asleep. And then they cut to his, his buddy <laughs> Lemo and Broly and they're both in tears like that was the greatest fight we've ever seen <laughs> and i was like i really like this broly now for some reason that yeah, one yeah, scene yeah. of him i having he's like so a, like he's so innocent man like he's so cool i like him a lot yeah it, so. it, it, it made me at least want to give a, a second a, a fair shot to broly which we'll probably have to do at some point for the show anyway so yeah, later you, down the line you definitely should watch the broly movie i mean he's very different um at, up until the point where he transforms anyway yeah, and uh. then obviously once he transforms, he's Broly. Funny enough, my brother after the theaters again, <laughs> when I told him like I never saw Broly, he's like, I saw Broly. How did you not see Broly? Isn't everything about you <laughs> thanks to Dragon Ball? It's like, <laughs> well, listen, I have, I have an, uh, I have an honor code, and that honor code was not does not include watching Broly anymore. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of the original Broly, uh, but th- I like this new one a lot. But th- I-, I liked him in this movie, even though he wasn't in it a ton. I like the off world stuff and the banter between the way that they interact with him, and um, also this movie I liked it because you get to see the characters that like aren't in other stuff. Like, so this was this really wasn't an issue with Battle of Gods. But it pops mm. up in Resurrection F a good bit. And uh, it pops up, not to the same degree, because Resurrection F has a different cast of characters, like Roshi and Tien. Yeah. Um, but it's really, really relevant in Broly. Because in Broly, what happens is there are literally none of these characters in that movie. The only one that seems to stand the test of time and is in everything is Bulma, because she's Bulma. Mm. Um, and then you have Beerus and Whis integrated by default. And it's just Goku and Vegeta. So when I say that they're not in the Broly movie, it's not that they're on the sidelines, you know, have a couple lines or whatever while Goku and Vegeta fight. They're literally not in the movie. Gohan's not in the movie. None of that. So I love seeing not only Krillin and 18 and their banter. And I like, you know, the chemistry him and uh, Krillin and 18 have with that one line where she was like, I brought everybody and Krillin. I thought that was hilarious. Um it's just fun seeing all these different characters, Goten and Trunks being here, which there's also the callback to, again, uh, Piccolo being like, wait a minute, I saw you guys not that long ago. What the heck? Why are you huge now? But for us, we hadn't seen them really in, in a few years in in the anime and whatnot. So, yeah. you know, it's it's been a while. So I guess it kind of tracks, right? But um, I love that too. And I think the callbacks are awesome. But it's more so like for me, Going back to Dragon Ball Super, there's a lot of episodes in Super, not a ton, maybe like, like a couple handfuls, but they're kind of, you know, they're nice. I really like the slice of life stuff. And this movie, this movie is a slice of life movie. It's not just that, like, the characters are in it that I like, but what they do with this movie is it's a lot of exposition and slice of life stuff. Like, Zen talked about Pan. Pan is one of the best parts of this movie. I love all her her interactions at the beginning, throughout the middle. And I love at the end where she sees Gohan's silhouette in the, in the dust. And she flies over to him and Piccolo and they quickly detransform. And then she's all on his shoulders. And if you watch her, she's like, like, where did that hair go? And she's like moving around his hair and like, <laughs> you know, because his hair was so long, but it isn't anymore. And she's like, what yeah. happened? Like, I love everything about that. And like the movie doesn't really have a ton of fights. They had that first fight with the Gamma and Piccolo. And then they stopped for a while and for like for like 20 minutes at least. Where they actually, explain what's going on and yeah. all that stuff. And they got a kidnap pan. And then finally they get back to the fights. And then they stop again when Goten and Trunks and 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 uh, Bulma show up and Krillin, and then they start again. You know, it's like it's not a it's not a fighting movie. Whereas again, paralleling it to Broly, Broly does all that pretty much in the very beginning, and then it turns to nothing but fights for the rest of the movie. So it's I, I like it. It's a very slice of life heavy movie with uh, the way that they kind of explain things. I mean, they're showing Pan a freaking school. That's like that's the craziest thing. And also, I love the fact that with this movie. You could make a legitimate argument that Piccolo is the main character of this movie because so much of it is from Piccolo's oh, Piccolo's perspective. 100% of the main character. Well. Yeah, I, w- it, I would it's, say it's him. It's it's legitimately all from Piccolo's perspective. So like that's cool to me because Piccolo hasn't been really relevant in in animation anyway uh in an extremely long time. You know, and they brought him up in Broly for a split second just to teach them the fusion dance again. And that's it. <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah, it's funny because I have the similar feelings about Piccolo because Piccolo. Yeah, obviously when you when I think of Piccolo, I think of like from the start from Demon King, Kami, yeah. like all these iterations of Piccolo, what he's kind of gone through, and some of my nail. favorite moments. Yeah, nail all that stuff. <laughs> uh, everything for it. I always think of like the pick the Piccolo stuff ends up being one of my some of my favorite things in general. And I always felt kind of bad, especially around Majin Buu, when it seemed like Piccolo wasn't really able to keep up. It seems like it happened to basically every character, it where did. it's like, even though Piccolo for a time was one of the strongest and was able to at least, like, <laughs> find a way to power himself up to just at least be on some level, it was when Majin Buu, he hit the wall officially, and he's like, mm, there's no, <laughs> there's no, I'm out, <laughs> I'm tapping out of this one. Yeah, so for him yeah. to be able to come back and have a way to like fight back and then when he actually transforms into like his giant hulking form it's like the first time he's actually legitimately been seen as some form of a threat in a very long time like they even give him like a (laughs) borderline satanic like oh as he slowly rises from below (laughs) terrifying that's like the first like real transformation that we've seen from a Namekian in the series as well. I mean, they do the giant thing and then they can merge with others. And that's the first time he really, he also does the ultimate Piccolo where he's got the yellow tint going on and his, his like ridges or whatever on his skin completely smooth out. It's, mm. It looks kind of weird. He looks like an actual like real pickle. Yeah, he does. <laughs> <laughs> Return so, to pickle. <laughs> so it's it's cool to see and i saw some stuff about um kind of explaining the lore of that form and apparently in the back his back is a, a image of a tree or the image yeah, is on his back of the tree, tree of and whatnot or whatever the, or the, the tree of life yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah so like it's it's got some crazy callbacks all across the series like i've been saying a few times if you kind of just pay enough attention to it um but yeah they you're right they did leave piccolo by the way so because really they did it to everybody yeah, and it really became the Goku and Vegeta show. And that's why I think to me, this movie is really, really fun because you get to see all these characters. And I, it is, I mean, let's just be honest, all the transformations are cop outs and ass pulls or whatever you want to say. Uh, they get them in different fashions. Uh, some are more rewarding than others. They feel better than others. But nonetheless, though, this movie is no different. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I feel like narratively, I think the, narr- the narrative issue with this movie is that uh, Zen said that, you know, we've, we've had some of the same story beats and all that stuff. But, like, seriously, with Gohan, I don't know why. I think this is the final time they do this in animation. But they keep doing the scholar, not scholar. Scholar, not fighting, I mean, not training thing. Yeah, how many times have we got to teach you this lesson, old man? How many times <laughs> you got to stop training and then get your shit rocked? Yeah, yeah. And, and he was really arrogant about in this movie when he was like, oh, do I need to really train? Because, you know, Goku and Vegeta, this and that. And it's like, okay, well, yeah, this has got to stop. Which is just why I said I think it's the last time. The the remake of Resurrection F, the terrible anime version of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They literally say word for word. He's like, I got complacent because I thought Dad and Free- Vegeta would always be here, and I I can't do that anymore. And then in this movie, he's like, Piccolo, shut up, you big dumb idiot. Dad's around. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude. Yeah. It, and then he it, has the, the lesson again in the tournament of power. Where he's like, no, he also has like if you if you go back to Super, the funny thing with Gohan's treatment. This is also why it feels really rewarding to see him in this fashion for me, as Gohan being my favorite character alongside Krillin. So naturally, I'm going to love this movie. But mm-hmm. um, if you if you just track Super, right? Super Battle of Gods type stuff. I mean, he's there, but he's obviously not relevant. He's just kind of a background character. Resurrection F. I mean, he's. He's the 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 appetizer, and you know they have the story beat of oh, I need to train more because, like you were just saying, things are going to happen in the future. Then we go to the universe arc, the universe uh, six arc, and stuff like that. The tournament. Oh, he's got a meeting, so he's not here. They find a way to conveniently remove him from that arc in its entirety. I mean, you don't see him for like a few dozen episodes, period. Um, and then you go to the next arc, and wouldn't you know it, he's conveniently left out of the plot again for the future trunk stuff. And at the very tail end. They finally bring him in, and they're like, oh, I would have gone with you. I need to train this and that. And then they go to the turn of the power, and you get the big payoff, and again, still needs to train. So, like, he was treated really badly throughout the entirety of Super. He just was. Yeah. Wasn't so, he the first eliminated as well in Turn of Power? Was he? I, need to, I don't know. I, I think from I his, his team, I want to say he was the first. 
Because I think Tayan ends up being second, but Krillin was like... I remember because a lot of people were angry yeah, when Krillin, Krillin... was eliminated first when he fought that fox guy. Yeah, I remember yeah. because people were legitimately at, like, this is a good way of, like, showing... Because they had Krillin, so many... Didn't Krillin get sniped by Frost? Like, at the last second? Like, yeah, he had beat somebody and then Frost pops him. And then Frost, like, shoves him off the side, basically, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. I think Gohan lasted for a while, though. Gohan he made was in it there. right up until the, uh, until the very end, actually. Because yeah, yeah, he he sacrificed himself to get rid of Dispo. Yeah, seconds. he was yeah. in there until the very end. Until it was just seventeen Goku, Vegeta, and uh, and Frieza. Until like Gohan the was the last one there. Yeah. Before it, well, unfortunately for that arc, it had to be all about seventeen in his boat. So the true MVP <laughs> of the, <laughs> the tournament of power had to be have to shine. <laughs> Yeah, so like for me, it, it, it particularly fit. it's it's like I said, it's annoying, but it feels good. And also, like I think that with the issue with this, not really an issue, but I think what this movie does is it. You know, we were talking about a moment ago how these characters are left by the wayside, and I think that that's why Piccolo feels the need to even get the Dragon Balls and do something akin to what happened previously in the series. Again, another callback, um, and get his potential unleashed because realistically. I think this guy actually hit his wall a long time ago. Like he's still going to steadily get stronger, but he doesn't, you know, go at the rate of growth as these Saiyan characters do. And unfortunate for him that they're the main characters of the series, so he's yeah. he's largely irrelevant. So I like this movie as well, bringing those characters to relevance because in the future, if something does happen, then they can be on equal footing to a degree whatever that future may hold for Dragon Ball, because we don't know what it is specifically. But I would like the idea of, like, these kind of... Even though we only see Beast Gohan for a brief, real small bit, I like the idea of continuing on with, like, Piccolo. And now you have a valid reason to include him. Like you have- My only <laughs> thing... My only thing is that, like, every time we get new Dragon Ball content, I'm just constantly in the back of my mind, like, damn, we're getting closer and closer to that predetermined end date of where things have to go in this series because they're going to obviously retcon it. I mean, if that, but the yeah. end of Z is like right here. This movie takes place a, like a year out. Pan's three years old. She's your, your perfect timeline tracker. She's four years old at that portion of the story where Goku uh, meets Oob and all that stuff happens. Yeah. So like every time we get new content, it's like, okay, we're closer and closer. I don't know how much they can keep shoving in, but they're like well, a year out. The next bad guy is going to be Ultima Kid Buu. <laughs> um, it's gonna be the evil inside of Oob uh, reawakening, and then they're gonna fight that, and then Goku's gonna go like, "Oh hey, this is the kid that's Boo," and then he's gonna be like, "I'm excited for the tournament next week when I get to fight this kid who's Boo," and then that that's gonna be the wink, wink, nudge, nudge to the audience that Super is now past the end of Z, and somehow and, Beerus will still be stronger than everybody, and then and then Piccolo will hear <laughs> the oh news God, that Beerus. a uh, that a small child has. Uh, Boo's power, and he'll go like, "I can handle that." And he'll go beat up, the, beat the shit out of that kid because he's not afraid. I've experienced beating the shit out of children. <laughs> Number one, get over here, <laughs> Goku. You really have to have the true feeling of beating a child to <laughs> really understand that. Uh, Hold on, someone. Goku. Let me handle this. I've got two decades of experience. <laughs> get over here. I've huh? been beating the shit out of two generations of your family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the funny thing is that they re- i don't know how they're gonna ever handle the oob stuff because you also have to remember that for a lot of people and you know what i won't begrudge anyone for holding the feelings of loving gt to their hearts but ever since gt's release they've done their damnedest to shed on anything related to gt ever be hap being able to even happen because they have um the peel-off crew, which are all kids at this time, so they can't be the old people that they were when GT starts. Uh, mm. the, the specific nature of the Shadow Dragons, which is that they are born from the wishes of the Dragon Balls. At this point, so many wishes have been made on the Dragon Balls, you don't have enough Shadow Dragons to make seven anymore. <laughs> there would have to be like 20 of them at this point, just because of how many wishes have been made and stuff like that, and it's just not possible. It's not feasible to actually do the storyline stuff of that. Super 17, I think, is legitimately the only one that they could possibly do because they've set up the fact that some parts of the Red Ribbon Army still kind of exist 
and now that Park Ranger 17. Like, that's the one thing about Super that uh, from GT that they kept is that <laughs> uh, Android 17 went off to become a Park Ranger, and he still is in Super. So Super 17 is, like, the closest thing from GT that can reasonably still happen. And then there's also the case of Super Saiyan 4, which is like, why would Goku ever, or anyone in theory, outside of Broly maybe, ever want to go Super Saiyan 4? It just doesn't make any sense. So, trying to do something where it's specifically the end of Z just is a headache, and I'm sure when the time comes, Toriyama will say, that's not a headache for me, bro, and he'll write whatever he wants. <laughs> and that will be the accepted canon as to why things are the way they are. As it usually is with Dragon Ball, and he'll like go like, eh, it's not that big of an issue. I don't even remember there being an issue with this, <laughs> so we're just gonna go with it. Um, oh my god. Yeah. It is really funny to think about, like, oh yeah, when Z ends, the idea of the power of Kid Buu being in a child was terrifying. And now it's like, not in any form a threat yeah, to was, any... <laughs> in the original ending of Z, where they're like, that kid's got the power of Kid Boo, and they'll be like, "Oh, that kid's got the power of Kid Boo." Oh, I think yeah. better than that. <laughs> not, not, not really. They're like, they're like a hundred times stronger than they were back then. I'm like, okay, this is not a problem. No, <laughs> not at all, none whatsoever. Got any more specific thoughts in you, D Free, about the movie? Anything else you want to talk about? Uh, no. I, I thought it was funny. When Piccolo, again, uh, I really love all the pan Piccolo stuff, but I really thought it was funny how Piccolo and the teacher, like, know each other. It's so, like... Yeah, it's like... <laughs> it's they're, like, a talking at pick up list from the school. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was Fucking so funny. Green guy. That is that, really funny. That also is funny to me, too, because it's, like, okay, they they clearly know that, like, I guess maybe because, like, you've got animals that talk in Dragon Ball and stuff like that. Maybe it's just not weird to see Piccolo out here, but he also sometimes is in disguise and stuff like that, but they've seen him a bunch. It just kind of feels weird to me that he just walks around and about like he's just a regular person yeah. and they don't care and all that stuff. So it's just kind of funny to me. Um, yeah, I thought that was really funny with the pan stuff. Also, I thought it was really, really uh, telling with go. Okay, so like Gohan kind of gives mixed signals in this movie. He does the, Oh, uh, uh, I I've been practicing in secret line, you know, with the special beam cannon. I took that to mean that he just kind of like, you know, does it every now and again, like cosplaying as Piccolo because he's a freaking nerd. <laughs> you know? Yeah, like, he's, just, he's just like, you know, he's just a, a, a nerd. So, My but God, also God. they're they're all <laughs> they're also telling us throughout the movie that like he's like they tell us a billion times that he's not training, and if he did, he had the potential to be the strongest person. Which I still think is kind of funny because I'll 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 always subscribe to the idea that him getting his potential unlocked was the definitive end of his power because that's just what the word means but in dragon ball it's a sliding scale to where your potential just endlessly gets higher and higher so they're like okay go on we know goku and vegeta are like ultra instinct ego freaking a quintillion times stronger than they were back in the boo saga but like if you trained you know you could get there and you could be stronger so i just i, I almost at this point i kind of find that to be a little bit unbelievable but i mean wouldn't you know it <laughs> Lo and behold, he kind of gets there. But I, I thought it was funny because they're giving the mixed signals of, oh, is he training? Is he not training? Uh, so the movie's kind of all over the place with just, with just Gohan in, in general. Yeah. I feel like I feel like everything else is fine. I think I think that Gohan is like really the only problem, like narratively with this movie. Like I enjoy he uh, Doctor Hito. Uh, he's a cool guy. Uh, I'm excited to see him actually stick around. Also, that's another thing is him and yeah, him, kinda, uh, one sticking yeah. around. Yeah, I was actually kind of curious to see if they would stick around as well, because I was like, oh, I actually kind of would like to see more of you, because they yeah, have a yeah, really yeah. weird dichotomy together. Also, every time the Gammas fight, they summon up Dokkan signs, which I think is funny, personally. Oh, but... I thought that was hilarious, yeah, too. Yeah, I like how people could <laughs> see them. That was funny. Yeah. He was, he was like, how can I see their sound effects? <laughs> yeah, Dokkan. <laughs> like, I thought that was great. Um, yeah. And I like for Dr. Hito just being like, you know, you know what? He's basically someone going like, you know what I really like? Superman. You know what the world needs? Superman. I made robot Superman. <laughs> Two of them. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, such a, he's a cool character. I like him a lot. Um... Oh, I thought of one more thing I liked finally. Mm -hmm. oh, and yeah? I don't know how we haven't mentioned it yet, because in hindsight, it might be my favorite joke in the movie. Um, that 
Gohan and Videl keep buying Piccolo stuffed animals that he doesn't oh, like. Oh yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was as good. as like the, his reward for helping them that he doesn't like. And they the just funny like, thing, more. funny thing about that is she did pick up another one uh, in the at the end post credit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where, where and what the you're talking about how she shows up is also the design of his phone case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's on his phone. I just think it's funny he has a freaking phone in the first place. The, he just and he holds it like it's hella nasty or whatever. He grabs yeah. it by the tip. I think it's because that's the way Demon King Piccolo held something back in Dragon Ball specifically. I want to say it's a specific callback, same similar to the throne that he said this sits on. I think that's a callback to that. I love I, that we're seeing his house as well for the first time on that same topic. Yeah, yeah. So Zen at the end during one of the end bits. They show Piccolo's house, and on the second story, they show all the plushes that they have given him <laughs> for all the times <laughs> they've helped him. <laughs> yeah, earlier on in the movie, he's like in his little throne, uh, and he looks over to a pile of them on the floor. <laughs> yeah, there's even more. I also like that he's like, why do you keep giving me this? <laughs> Stop. Please. <laughs> and they're both just like, eh, hey, we know he likes it. <laughs> what, what <is> it? <laughs> And also, I like how Videl's like, I'll bring you food. Because, like, I don't eat food. How do you not know that about me? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> so, yeah. I'll bring you some tasty water then. Thank you. <laughs> He's it's so put upon and angry. <laughs> so good, though. Um, yeah, that's that funny. is a very good thing. <laughs> I'm glad you remembered it. I liked it, too. Um, what were you saying, DP, before? No, no, that's. That's it. I just remember that, like, this was probably, honestly, this was probably the funniest Dragon Ball movie I've seen in a while. Like, mm. it's very Toriyama. This movie is very Toriyama. Uh, down to the title. <laughs> yes, down to the title. Um, God, that title's bad. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's very yeah. bad. It's but bad. I, I think I, I think I remember Broly having a few really funny moments. Um, but then again, the second half of the movie is all fights. So you're not laughing during the fight, really. No, you're um, screw- you're le- you're all chanting Broly, Goku, Vegeta, something like Vegeta, that. Vegeta, Vegeta, or no, Gogeta, Gogeta. There you go, yeah, Vegeta, that- Broly. <laughs> I remember that because people would not stop talking about it <laughs> when. Well, that the- that movie got crazy marketing and had like two like hit songs and all that stuff, and yeah, this movie Blizzard. doesn't have anything. No, I feel <laughs> it feels like an experiment on their part. Yeah. So but how also- did you? Well, Ven, you, Zen, excuse me, you saw the the cam, uh, but I, I, you know, it's not as crisp. But I'm sure you still have thoughts on it. How did you feel about the visual? Mixed. Um, it, it was weird. You could tell when they were and weren't prioritizing it, which because there were some fights, and I, unfortunately, it was the first one when Piccolo's fighting um, Gamma Two, where I was almost like taken out of it by like how jerky and like janky it looked and i was like oh god i hope it's not like this but then as the like the real fight started it looked really good like yeah 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 so, and you know it that's kind of like a thing with the medium right where like in a in 2d animation you can tell still when they don't care that much but it's easier to mask it you know yeah you can do different cuts and things that, that do it different ways when where it's a 3d animation like it just is so mm-hmm. there's a lot of moments in like some of the earlier fights where piccolo's moving around and i'm like oh god that looks really jumpy and, and it's weird but then you get to like when Gohan is fighting um, Gamma One, yeah, and then really when good. when Piccolo comes in, and it just starts looking really, really good. So you you can tell where they put the time in, but it it that's good in a good way too, right? Like I, yeah, you can notice the bad ones, but you can also notice when they really uh, made it pop off as well. Yeah, yeah. I I thought this movie could have used another like month to just get polished, and maybe I, like yeah. it's some of the textures like were not the, the greatest specifically yeah. when that's what i was going to say is that uh my my answer to my question i thought it looked really good my mm-hmm. eyes adjusted really quickly and early on but there were a couple scenes like even later on in the movie where it's just like man that i i completely forgot it was cg until here you know so it completely took me out of it for a second and then it gets back and then it happens again and it's just it looks really really janky and you know not polished or cleaned up but, oh, so I watched a camera rip which had fan subs on it. So I don't know what the official explanation for this is. But uh, if this is in the official, how did you guys feel about the weird retcon to Jiren? Oh, oh yeah, I, I completely <laughs> forgot to talk about that in my review too. So, so um, here, here's my specific thing. I think Vegeta's full of shit. <laughs> and that's so very Vegeta, possible. Vegeta says, uh, and because uh, again, I watched the dub, but these days the dub is pretty faithful to mm-hmm. the, the. And I watched sub, so I'll be able to answer. 
Yeah. Like, so what, what the dub say? Uh, Vegeta says, you know, basically Jiren, and I mean this part's true. You know, Jiren is uh, he was moving, but he is moving freely, and then at the last second, putting all of his force into the hit. But naturally, he wasn't actually that much stronger than them, which I don't know if they mean them there, because them there is way stronger than them in the Tournament of Power, because just because how Dragon Ball scaling works. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know if they mean that, because they, I mean, they got several times stronger just in that, what, hour for the tournament? My goodness. Yeah. Um. Anyways, so I don't know if what they're talking about, but Vegeta basically says that, you know, he wasn't that much stronger than them. He just was more experienced, basically. And the meditating was helping him. And Vegeta is then from there adapting some of those same traits into his own fighting, which is throwing Goku for a loop as well. But yeah, that was kind of weird because it, it felt like Jiren was significantly stronger because if he wasn't significantly stronger, they wouldn't have needed to have gotten significantly stronger themselves. There wouldn't have been like so much crazy fighting. So that's why I'm saying like at some point, this is something that is always going to crop, crop up when it comes to talking about Dragon Ball. And I think it's a lot of things where I feel like it's the influence of maybe certain ways people choose to take power scaling. But when Vegeta made that statement, I did not take it as the truth. I took it as Vegeta is acting like his normal cocky self and saying like, no, obviously we're not, he's not that much stronger. He just knows how to use his stuff more and he's able to conserve his power a little bit more. But the way that people take the statement of he's not that much stronger than us is a literal like, okay, he's clearly, what he's saying is 100% the truth and here's where it's going. Where I feel like in actuality, it's Vegeta kind of going like, I don't know. He's just being Vegeta and he's like going like, "Ah, oh, yes. Clearly I was I almost had him. <laughs> if only I knew how to fight similar the to only him." The thing with that I explanation would... that I don't know about is that Weiss agrees with him afterward. Yeah, yeah. So I was going to say I would agree if Weiss didn't agree at the end. And the uh, the implication based on tones and the way they say it, uh you know, maybe that's a little easier to understand in the dub, obviously. Um because we speak English. But anyways, they the implications that Vegeta's not trying to be facetious or anything like that, or he's he's being genuine. He's mm-hmm. saying, you know, we weren't that much weaker, but this guy was able to do this one thing that we need to learn how to do, and that's something that we then Says doubles down like, on as well. Hmm. Yeah, I can see that, especially because but he's right. Thing- because at the end of the movie, he ends up beating Goku. And for the first time, which is funny because it's like, this is technically the second time you've beat Goku. Did you forget when you used him as a squeak toy back in the, in the ape days? Yeah, yeah, way back. The, the, like, the thing about that is that it, it also kind of, like, if you were to tell me that Broly was stronger than Jiren, I wouldn't really disagree. You know, it's, it is what it is. I wouldn't matter at that. Yeah, I mean, it's just Dragon uh, Ball. Yeah, I, I wouldn't care. But this one, the way that this makes it sound, it almost makes it sound like, Broly is significantly stronger, you know, because yeah, of the well, way it was that weird because, like you said that um, you, you didn't know when Vegeta meant because of the way it was worded in the dub in the fan sub version of it, they out, which obviously is not as relevant as like the regular sub version, but Vegeta outright says, wasn't like, like saying at that tournament, we were about equal in power, but he uses his power better well, than us. He might have said that too in the dub, to but I don't, re- I don't remember exactly. He might have said that to be fair, but yeah, that's that's pretty crazy because he was he was clearly, <laughs> he, especially he, when he powered he up. The, the Kaioken blue cooked. spirit bomb back at Goku with his eyes, <laughs> like <laughs> he just, go, go straight up. Both of you, no problem. Jiren was cooking them for the entirety of the yeah. Tournament. No, it's crazy to say we were about equal, but he uses his power better. That, that's nuts. It's like when uh, you, I went one on one with Michael Jordan. And he sc- he, he scores a hundred, and I score two, and I'm like, "Hey, you know what? If I yeah. had used my stuff a little bit better, <laughs> I scored two on Michael Jordan. And if I had just done everything that he did, I could have." <laughs> exactly. Maybe to give Vegeta some a little bit of leeway. Maybe he meant them at the very tail end. You know, <laughs> Super Saiyan Blue Evolution. Yeah. Uh, Ultra Instinct. Did Maybe Sam Blue Evolution get absolutely fucking <laughs> obliterated by Jiren, though. But if only he had known to hold back his power just a little bit until the exact moment. <laughs> a little bit longer before he. That's a cool concept, though. You know, yeah. saying that he had and... that much control over his power. Yeah, and to be fair, and, yeah, and kind of a nice little um, like link to the the manga universe because the manga universe seems like it 
focuses a lot more heavily on like stamina and the importance of it. Yeah. Um, because they talk about it in the Tournament of Power, because like Goku's got to recover his stamina, but like he yeah. can what still fucking mean? mop people. Do you, no, do matter. you remember that whole episode on the delayed key onset or whatever it was called? Yeah, post, his uh, onset syndrome where he yeah. can't use his key for one episode. Post hit after the Universe Six tournament, and then it just mm-hmm. disappears completely. <laughs> <laughs> they never bring it up again. And then all oh, of a sudden, he could be a blue that cow is? Well, You haven't watched Super that much, have you? No, I haven't. So, I, what so, what is that? So, when he fights Hit, and there's two tournaments in Dragon Ball Super. There's the Universe Seven versus Universe Six, mm-hmm. and the Tournament of Power. Uh, when Goku fights Hit for the first time, which is the very first time he uses Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken, um, yeah. there's backlash because obviously Kaioken is supposed to be taxing on you. Yeah, and, and so he is develops what is called like delayed onset key disorder. <laughs> Which is a, a, King Kai calls it something like that, and he's like, "Yeah, so that means that you can't use your key anymore." Oh man, that affects so one Goku's of seven like, males. Okay, I gotta just careful. chill for a bit and not use my key. Then was that the episode that like he got like shot with a shotgun or something like that? No, that was no? just in one of the earlier ones. <laughs> that episode actually has a really good moment of him being like a grandpa to Pan, though. That was really cute. Oh yeah, yeah. it's, it's oh, been right, years. Because that was a Pan episode where she kept getting into shit. And it was in, it was a big deal because Goku couldn't do anything about it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That oh my god, I mean, that's there's, a, great. there's a cute moment at the end where him and Piccolo are sitting on a roof, and like Piccolo, talking, yeah. and, and he's got Pan by the the tummy, and he's like flying her around like she's an airplane, and then he oh, gives man. her this speech about like, um, I can't right now, but if I could, I'd fly you up so you could touch the stars, and I was like, oh. That's yeah. really cute. That is nice. I should see Dragon Ball Super. <laughs> I, that sounds great. It's 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 something. It's got it's got its highs and lows. I'll say that. Yeah. I go yeah. again. Obviously, we're saving it for when we have to talk about it on the show. <laughs> if you do watch it, you got to watch the the Blu-ray versions. So, so here's the animation is way better. So here, yeah, just as just to let everyone know the specific episodes I've seen. I've seen the beginning of Dragon Ball Super. I think the first three episodes. The uh, Aureli episode. Wait, you didn't see episode five? I don't think I saw episode five. <laughs> that one looks way better now. Mm. <laughs> but we'll uh, never the, forget. Oh, yeah, the classic meme episode. Yeah, we'll yeah. never forget that one. I, I've seen better. the screenshots of it <laughs> where everyone's reacting of it, but that's about it. Uh, the Aureli episode, like I mentioned, and then some episodes of the Tournament of Power, specifically near the end. So I missed like the entire beginning of it. I think when Wait, I started, you saw the Goku Black stuff. Yes, I didn't. I haven't seen anything of Goku Black, which is wow. funny because um, back in the day, in the group chat for the Dokkan mods, it was nothing but them talking about the 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 Black arc. <laughs> it was nothing but that. Yeah, when that it was, is, in my opinion, probably the best thing to come out of Super is that arc. So yeah, yeah I remember. Probably. I remember hearing the conversations, but never actually seeing the episodes. And then when Goku went, um, well, you also played Dokkan. So yeah, you I also see played those Dokkan. things. Yeah, so that that's another way I was able to experience it in some kind. I remember the day when Super Saiyan Blue uh, Vegito fought <laughs> Rose. Actually, I remember I saw that episode because that episode is titled literally like Super Saiyan Blue Vegito shows up, and everyone's like, uh, "They're defusion by the end of this." So he's yeah, only here for an episode. It. They retconned it. Yeah. Yeah. So I watched that episode. <laughs> Uh, basically a lot of the big ones whenever something big would happen and people were like oh it's a moment i would kind of jump in again for the tournament of power where the first time he goes uh ultra instinct i was i watched that and then from the actual tournament of power until the end of it i want to say the last maybe the last seven episodes or so like i remember super topo and his big ripped, ripped muscles i think from oh, that point on god topo yeah, God that's, Topo. That's him using the God of Destruction power because you missed it apparently, but he was a he was the next in his universe. He's the next candidate for the God of Destruction. Yeah, I had to look that up on a wiki, and I was like, "Whoa, this guy!" Yeah, the- <laughs> but he's so he's so uh, conflicted with his power that he's like, "Nah, I'm not using that destruction power." <laughs> so yeah. yeah, I'm not. He's I'm really cool. all about the justice. But but the funny thing about him is is that like it's like Jiren not right there, but I guess Jiren is like he's too he's too you know, pure to to go that route, right? Yeah, no, he would never go destructive. (laughs) Never go destructive mode. And then from there, it's basically up until the end, and I saw the end of Dragon Ball Super. So it's not a lot of episodes. It's a very weird mishmash. And then, like I said, I skipped Broly completely. 
Uh, and then it was this movie, which I think is probably why I ended up liking it so much, because it's been literal years. Remember mm. the actual end of Super? That's the last time I consumed anything Dragon Ball related. And that was like uh, four years ago, right? Yeah. In terms of an anime, that was the last time I watched anything from it. So, like, even the games, like Dokkan, <clears throat> I have a love and hate relationship, mostly hate, but there is some love in there somewhere. Legends, I'm also in a big hate relationship. Ain't no love found there anymore. <laughs> it's Whatever was there was gone. I hate hate relationship. Here's my one love of Dragon Ball Legends, the videos my, my friends release on Dragon Ball Legends. <laughs> Gotta support the homies. That's about where I end on Dragon Ball Legends. Kakarot, I played like the beginning of it, but I didn't really like the control, so I don't know if I'm ever going to go back. Um... Mm-hmm. Dragon Ball The Breakers, I saw some videos of other dudes playing it, and I was like, damn, is this not for me? It's a fun game, though. It's a fun game. Yeah, it seemed like fun. The people who were playing it seemed fun, but it was also the the epitome of the PS2 era. This game is jank, but it's Dragon Ball, and I love it. And I yeah, think that's yeah, yeah. games like that should exist. I just don't know if I want it right now. <laughs> so... um. And then the, the the biggest thing for me was when Fortnite released Goku and everyone else. That was like my moment where I was like, that kind of hyped me up for the movie because I really wasn't feeling the movie at all up until because maybe it had something to do with like the promotion of Broly, where I was like, the if you were there for the promotional cycle of Broly, it was fucking exhausting. It was yeah. so many people saying, like, he's in there, he's confirmed, he's not confirmed, he isn't. It's about the original first Saiyan, which is always something someone says whenever any Dragon Ball shit is related. They're like, who, it's obviously about the first one. No, it's gonna be Bardock, it's gonna have this, it's gonna have that. And then when it finally came out, they released, like, 70 different trailers that showed you the entire movie in trailers. And I was like, There's, I just don't see the point of watching this movie anymore. And everyone seemed to enjoy it, but I just couldn't. But then for this movie, when it came out, there was very limited trailers. From the one trailer I did see from it, I was like, kind of feeling it. I was like, I'm going to give this a shot. It has some other dudes in it that aren't usually a not in it. Especially after I heard the reports that Broly, literally none of the other characters are in it. But Goku and Vegeta and some other ones. That really put a sour mood on me as well. Because I'm actually someone who really does like all the side characters in Dragon Ball. There's some of my favorite characters in it. And I've made my peace with it in, over the years that many of them won't get showcased anymore. But I still like seeing them there. So to just go away with them just didn't make me feel right. Um, yeah. So when this movie's promotion kind of started and everyone was talking about like, man, this is just the worst promo for it in the world. The fact that they didn't show much of it and also in the movie itself, they should have just showed Cell Max from the beginning. I'm going to say right now that first trailer should have said Cell Max. Because the movie outright tells you 30 minutes in, hey, we're building Cell Max. I thought that was weird that they just were like, oh, here's the entire plan. And here's Cell yeah. Max in the very yeah. beginning. And there, and then he's very specifically like, well, that's a bad idea. That's why I created the Gammas. <laughs> the Gammas are going to be way better. And you can tell that he kind of doesn't want Cell Max because he's like, you know, maybe at a certain point he realized it's a really dumb idea to bring back Cell <laughs> Well, that's why he built in the failsafe, right? Yeah. Because the head thing was only there because he didn't trust Cell Max. And he yeah. needed a way to control it because he specifically tells Magenta, hey, uh, especially if we release him now, by the way, imagine trying to control this thing. It would be so, impossible. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was interesting. I need to know how much time he specifically said. Does, do you, either of you guys remember how much time he said that was needed on that? I think Before uh, no, Cell Max th- would be done? I think he said months. He really, I think he said specifically months, but I also felt like he was on purpose delaying the actual finish of Cell Max. Yeah, maybe. The reason I ask is because I, I, you know, there's like, I've been really thinking about some of the scenes like that. And, you know, Goten and Trunks, or not Goten and Trunks, uh, Gohan and Trunks are now parallels to their future selves, pretty much from the same age. Um, they're they are as old as each other and the funny thing is if you go to the way the things played out there cells is still in construction and this day and age in a different timeline it's just the original cell and a few years later i think it's like five years later or whatever he pops out finally so i'm thinking like if if this this is a really neat opportunity for a callback if cell max needed five years he would have actually (laughs) been released in the same year that the original cell was in the future before he went back to steel trunks, timeline. So it's like, 
there's opportunity there, but I don't think they capitalized on that one. They might not have thought of that, but no, it, it's an interesting one. That is very interesting, and I'm sure if you can tell Toriyama, he'll figure out a way to write that. He's like, I didn't even think of that shit. You got you're spinning some good shit right now. Let me write this down <laughs> on a notepad real quick and look, see yeah, if I can implement it. I always chart the the future Trunks timeline stuff because you know the history of Trunks. Sp- specifically where he's a certain age and you got the future Gohan in that movie. And this Gohan is, you know, the same age now. That's how far things have come in Dragon Ball. He's not a little kid anymore like he was. So it, it, you also can think about the Cell returning and then, oh, wait, but Cell was in production secretly in this lab by the supercomputer all this time. And eventually he's done in the future. And then he goes back in time and, and that's how things get started. So it would have been a nice little feedback loop. If, uh, you know, the Cell Max pops up at the same time, technically. Because, you know, their events are way different because they found that computer and stopped that stuff. Yeah, yeah. It would have had Hell, to do you, it. Can you imagine how Cell would be if that original Cell got to get birth in their timeline and, you know, got to feed and get to his perfect form or whatever the case is? Uh, nice. With the cells of these characters now and stuff, he would oh, he would scale crazy. Insane. <laughs> he would be <laughs> crazy powerful <laughs> if that were the case. Yeah, um, so... So Golden doubt- Frieza in there and stuff. He'd, he'd scale like crazy. Yeah. And then, the, well, we'll see about that because now there's even more crazy scaling if you ask the super manga. Well, that's another <laughs> thing I'll mention. I don't read the super manga, so I don't really have a... I feel like a lot of the people who are currently up to date on it are like not a huge fan of kind of the stuff of where it's going. So I don't really have that <laughs> negativity in my life. So I'm able to kind of just enjoy certain stuff of like Dragon Ball, which is why I think I ended up liking this one so much because it had been four years since I had seen something of Dragon Ball animated and it was uh, really well done. I liked the 3D of it. I found a lot of it actually enjoyable and funny as well. I liked a lot of the little details. Like there's a really funny, th- like the guy with the pompadour because he's the driver and his hair is too big he has a little bump in the car to make room for the hair oh carmine (laughs) yeah carmine yeah Uh, there's like a little bump for his hair right there and they don't ever make a joke about it it's just the design of the car of like how does this character fit in this car well there we go obviously uh in the dub at least uh hito does he points it out oh really that's funny when they're recruiting him in the sub there's there's no they make fun of his hair but that's about it (laughs) Yeah, yeah, they they make fun of his hair too, but he points out the car, I believe. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, there's also some really silly details, like when um, he's talking about how they're the good guys, and he cuts off the the woman in front of him, just to make it how clearly they're evil. It's later revealed that that was Pan's teacher, so he cut off a school teacher, <laughs> <laughs> which is really funny and a really like small little detail thing. Like I said, the Aureli run is in there too. There's just a lot of like nice little details in there that I found enjoyable to just kind of sit back, relax and watch. I also had watched it in IMAX so it looked really nice which is unfortunately also why I noticed when it didn't look really nice because <laughs> IMAX really highlighted, highlighted that. Um, the screams were also soul shattering I feel like I, I'm probably going to lose my hearing a little bit earlier because of my specific showing of Dragon Ball Super in that IMAX theater. But I always feel like they're not loud enough whenever I go see an anime movie like the, mm. the volumes at like 75 when every other movie's at 100. It can feel that way until you hear Gohan screaming at the top of his lungs. No, until you hear Nozawa screaming at the top N- of Yeah, Nozawa lungs. just mm-hmm. do yeah. putting in some fucking work with those screams still yeah. to this day and age. Yeah, she is. I love uh, her so much. But yeah. that I know that your your ears probably were ringing though with that high pitch. <laughs> yeah, well, it took a it took I think 30 minutes for me to kind of settle in, especially yeah. when Gamma 2 attacks and is like Ooh, and there's like non-stop explosions like jesus christ i think i made a mistake but i was able to settle into it uh i really liked a lot of the new characters even the the one-off ones like the red ribbon army i've always liked the red ribbon army because it's a really funny uh thing from dragon ball because it's the first time if you ever want to chart the course of when did the goku solos everything start it was the red ribbon army at the end when all his friends came to help him and he said oh it's okay i already took care of them and that's maybe one of the best gags at Dragon Ball when he's like, uh, like they all show up with like guns ready to fight the Red Ribbon Army with him. And he's like, ah, don't worry about it. I took care of them. They weren't, they weren't that big of a deal. Um, so I like uh, seeing them again. I like that Ninja Murasaki in the age of 2022 was in a 3D model that was shown at the beginning of the movie. 
Oh my uh, god. Like that opening sequence was so good of the Dragon Ball one. Um mm-hmm. It that looked really nice. It looks so nice. I was wondering why, because apparently some people were saying, like, maybe they'll just remake Dragon Ball. And I was like, why would they need to remake Dragon Ball? It already looks pretty nice for the time. And it wasn't until I saw the movie and I saw that opening where I was like, ah, I would be kind of down. When he was fighting fucking Officer Black, I'm like, I, I don't remember the fight being that good. In <laughs> I don't remember them doing that many moves in the anime when he fought Black. Um, but it looked amazing for that opening sequence so um it just ended up doing a lot there was also a really nice i have a specific i'm gonna call this a callback even though i'm pretty sure it wasn't this movie brought back the krillin saves the day meme from the original dragon ball movies (laughs) oh my god because in the original dragon ball movies uh at a certain point um someone if someone would come and save the day it was piccolo uh piccolo would come in and save the day and save gohan out of nowhere uh, but then it would. The joke ended when um, when Krillin showed up dressed as Piccolo in the Return of Broly. Yes, which is a really good joke. Yes, and they would never do that joke again. But then he returns here to save Gohan and everyone else by hitting him really quickly with a Destructo disc, and then hitting him with the shit. What is the fucking blast called? The the one that yeah, blinds God. you for a bit. Kianzan, uh, yeah, which is... Oh, no, Taiokan. Kianzan is a structure. Taiokan is the solar flare. Yeah, the, 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 he hits him with the solar flare, which is also funny, because I think that's the second time he was able to hit Cell with a solar flare. <laughs> he was able to hit him again with a solar flare. So I kind of like that, when he was able to save the day, even if it was for a brief moment. That was good enough for me. So, yeah, really enjoyed it. Really had a really fun time. There was only eight dudes in that theater. And I'm going to tell you right now, I enjoyed every single bit of it. I didn't even care by the end of it that there wasn't that many people in there. I was enjoying it. I was laughing. I was having a good time. I wasn't, like, clapping and going, like, Kamehameha at the screen. If you're thinking I was being one of those, (laughs) I was being a weird of the theater. I wasn't. I was just silently and lovingly enjoying my time with Dragon Ball and kind of, like, having a good old trip down. It was definitely a nostalgia movie. Uh, So I can't really fault any of the problems Zen has with it because he's right to a certain extent like for some people that's just not going to be enough in this day and age and if they can't handle it then this movie's just not going to be for them and and it's unfortunate and i think that they should also improve look to improve in that specific area and look to improve and like move forward and just do better by dragon ball because this really is one of the most iconic franchises that shonen jump has and they need to kind of like I guess start treating it like it is as opposed to kind of like being like ah it's fine we can experiment with Dragon Ball because it's Dragon Ball and it will always be okay at a certain point I kind of just want them to be like to feel like the rever- the revelry back to the I don't know if I am even saying that word right, 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 right. but my words they're all being jumbled up into a salad I just wanted Dragon Ball to feel like it's respected in some points and if they can ever reach that day again I think that would be great that would probably involve them releasing another anime, uh, which no one in the world knows when that's ever happening, unless they pretend to <laughs> know the specifics about it. Uh, so yeah, that's my specific feelings on that one. And you guys got any more specific feelings to say about Dragon Ball Superhero? No, nope, enjoyed it. Sure was a movie. Sure was a movie, Zen. <laughs> So that's the end of Shonen Archive. Thank you, everyone, for joining us, especially if you made it this far. If you saw the movie, feel free to tell us how you felt down below and anything related to Dragon Ball or anything we talked about, really. There's a lot to talk about in the movie, funny enough, even though I think the description of the movie was about 20 minutes and we've been going for an hour and 37 minutes since then. Wow. So, yeah, we've been... Talking deep a lot about Dragon Ball, but it's always fun to talk about Dragon Ball when I got uh, Zen and uh, D Free with me. I was about to call you Dokkan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, man. Thanks for having me. I've got to go check up on these kids, so I've got to bounce here. Go ahead. Well, I'll end off the show, so feel free to leave off and go check on your kids. Don't be like Gohan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I'll see you later. Peace out. See you later. Ah, so yes, thank you very much for watching. If you want to see more of Zen, I believe you recorded something for <laughs> Shonen and Chill that's also talking a little bit more about your thoughts on Dragon Ball, correct? 
Uh, yes, the manga version this time. They mm. were not any more uh, soft than these ones were. Yes, so if you want to go check out Zen there with Ocean Man, Oceanus, you can go check out Zen's channel, which is uh, linked usually at the end here. Uh, and you can, if you want some more Dragon Ball content, or in general, D-Free content, then you can go to D-Free's channel, which I will also figure out a way to link back. Don't worry, I'll figure out the way to do all these different linkings. And if you want some more me, then you know where to find me. This is literally the channel. Go check right out some in, of my right other stuff. Right here, right now. Right here, baby, the number one place for, <laughs> for Zedrod content still. I still have the most videos featuring Zed in it. You sure do. <laughs> you sure do. And also featuring me talking about either Forgo or talking over specific ads or something like that. Whatever floats my boat at that specific moment in time, you'll find some more about it. And hopefully soon, Zen, fucking the Black Clover Fuke state of Jumpudi is ending so we can talk about yes, the new Jin Gintama units. Yes, Gintama's coming out. Fucking looking forward to that shit when it happens. <laughs> I just didn't have it in me. I just didn't feel like the need to crap on Black Folk Clover fans when they're having a moment in Djibouti. So I decided to wait for something for us to actually feel excitement for instead yeah, of just to trying to care about. Yeah, I didn't want to like make them feel bad. The internet does that enough for me. I don't need to do it more. <laughs> and that's it for Shonen Archive, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Let's say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. And you know what the best part is, Zen, about this and talk about Dragon Ball again? Mm. We get to play that theme song! Hell yeah! Hey. It's your hey. That is a good fucking theme song. It is really good. It's going to be great because it's going to start at the beginning and nobody's going to know what the hell it is. <laughs> and then at the end, they're going to be like, oh. That's fucking